Okay, today we are going to answer the question, a boom microphone versus a lavalier microphone. The point of this video is to quickly talk about different environments in terms of echoiness, picking up environments and things like that, and compare versus, you know, using a, a lavalier mic versus a boom mic for your skit or your interview or whatever. I have a tape measure with me so that we can be kind of scientific about this. Okay, so right now the audio you are hearing is coming in through this Rhodes wireless microphone, this lavalier mic. Um, it is transmitting from my pocket to an H4N in the right channel. And I am standing approximately four feet, five inches or so away from the boom microphone. It is pointed directly at my mouth, so you're hearing this. Now, let us switch to the microphone, which is a Sennheiser 600, I believe. Now, this is the Sennheiser boom microphone pointed roughly at my face area, picking up any ambience of the room. If you pan the camera up real quick, you'll see that the ceiling is only, oh, I can scratch it with my fingertip, and I'm only 5'7", so it's probably only about seven feet tall, and this room is, is longer than it is tall. And you can hear the kind of echoey reverb that the Sennheiser is picking up. We'll quickly switch back to the, uh, the lavalier mic, the Rhodes lavalier mic, and you can hear again how the two perform in this room. Now we're going to go into a couple other situations, a vaulted ceiling, outside, and then into a small echoey shed to show you the difference between using two mics. We're not focusing so much on the brand or quality of these mics. They're both very good quality um, in their area. They're not top of the line expensive, but you'll be able to see for what your needs use switching back and forth. So now let's go over to the vaulted ceiling room and see how that works. Okay, so here we are. Right now, we are using the Rhodes Lavalier mic. Uh, I'm in a room, if you want to pan up, you can see that I can't even reach it. You know, you're, you're a good, the ceiling's about five feet from right here all the way up to the very top, and I'm five foot, so it's probably about 10 feet tall. There is an echo in the room. Again, you're, we are using the lav mic right now. Let's go ahead and switch to the Sennheiser boom mic that is attached directly to the H4N. And while I am talking, uh, I will measure. I am oh, about five feet, so I'm gonna step a little closer so we're closer to where we were last time. So I'm about, uh, right about here is about four feet, five inches. And this is about probably average distance you will get, lower it down just a little bit. This is about the average distance you will get away from a boom mic when you're recording a skit. You'll normally have it up pointed down at your actors. It is pointed directly at me, but it's also gonna pick up the reverberations of the room. Now I'm gonna step back about a, a foot or two. Um, at this point, we're still using the Sennheiser boom mic, but I am obviously gonna be more echoey now. I am a, roughly about seven feet away. This is a pretty bad situation. If you can't get your mic any closer than that, you're gonna have lots of echo. But just for the heck of it, let's switch back over to the Rode lavalier mic. Okay, now I'm using the Rode lavalier mic and you can hear the difference on whether it's picking up echo or not. Now, me standing there or here isn't gonna be any different to this, but in a situation where you maybe just can't get that boom mic any closer you know, in the shot, this might be a better, better microphone to use. It's also gonna have different quality. My voice level isn't changing too much. I can go higher or I can go quieter. If I need to be quieter, it's a little easier to pick up on something like this. But you can see. Now, let's switch back over to the Sennheiser. You can hear again the echoiness of the room, how much reverb there is going on. My voice is a little bit louder. I'm projecting a little more. I'm gonna lower my voice now. If you have to raise your levels, that's gonna make a difference too. If I'm whispering, it's gonna be really hard to hear and you're gonna pick up other things in the background. So let's head outside now and try the two mics out there. We're outside now, it's a little bit of windy. We are right now using the Rhodes Lavalier. I don't have a wind cover on this, so you might be picking up some of the wind on it, unfortunately. I'm the exact same four feet, five inches that I was indoors, I've measured it. So this is how uh, the Lavalier sounds. I'll be quiet for a minute. It's a car passing. Okay, now let's go ahead and switch to the Sennheiser boom microphone. This is the Sennheiser boom microphone again, about four, four and a half feet away from me, being pointed directly at me from the cameraman. Let's be quiet for a minute. Here comes a car. So in an outside environment, when you're about four and a half feet away, which is probably about average for a boom mic, this is the kind of uh, you know uh, experience you're going to get using a boom mic in that situation. Now switching back to the Rhodes Lavalier, let's hear how that sounds. I am outside, I'm talking, any reverb is being picked up, let's be quiet for a second. 
don't hear too much. So that's the kind of experience you're going to get between these two mics being used outside. Let's do a, one final test inside the little shed where it's very echoey and see what we get. Now we're inside the shed. Uh, right now you're listening to the lavalier mic. This is the Rode lavalier mic wirelessly going to the H4N. I can't quite get far enough away in here. It's a very small compact shed, but I'm about three feet seven inches away. So a little shorter than the other distances. Um, if you want to pan around, you can see this is a very enclosed space, lots of surfaces for my voice to be bouncing off of and onto. And if I was in here giving dialogue or adjusting the volume of my voice and speaking quieter or louder or whatnot, this is the kind of experience you'd get from the lavalier mic in this situation. Let's now switch to the Sennheiser. Okay, now we are listening to the Sennheiser boom microphone, again at about three feet seven inches away or so. We're in the same enclosed space. This is me giving information or dialogue or whatever, and if my voice was a little bit quieter, this is what you'd hear. And if my voice was a little bit louder, that's what you'd hear. I'm going to guess that that's probably going to be a little more echoey than this. As I say, the, the, the sound waves are bouncing all around off these walls, and this is a kind of a nightmarish place to try to, to try to pick up audio, but we did a little skit in here, and it was very reverby and echoey because we didn't have any lavalier mics to work with. So, one last time, let's switch back to the Rhodes lavalier mic. This is the lavalier mic inside this shed. Again, lots of echo in here. And you can see if you hear any difference between the two microphones being used in this situation and what might be a better fit for you in case you're going to be doing something like that. It might be good to have one of each of these. Let's go outside for one last little example of why it's kind of cool to have one of these guys. Okay, we're outside now. And right now I'm only probably about the same distance as I was. I'm about four feet here away we are listening to the Rhodes lavalier mic we're still outside so that's kind of the same thing but one of the best things that you can get with this is mobility for whatever you're shooting whether it be a skit a movie or an interview if your character or person is walking around like this and doing something they're going to have generally basically the same audio quality all wherever they go as long as there's not too much things affecting it like other noises in that area or rubbing against it now let's go back here and we're going to switch to the Sennheiser boom microphone. So now we're using the Sennheiser boom microphone. It's being pointed at me. My cameraman is going to follow me as I walk. And this is kind of roughly what you get with somebody operating a boom mic. Now that isn't going to sound as good as somebody who's standing here directly with it on them all the time. But this is just an example of what you'd have if somebody was following your, your actors with the boom mic and what kind of challenges you might face with that. You get more freedom with this and you don't have to have an extra crew member following them if you have a lavalier mic. So that's what we're hoping to get out of it is more mobility to be able to get to places, you know, real locations in the real world to film. Whereas it'd be really hard to get a guy with a boom mic and an audio and a tripod and a can. You got to have like a whole set. So you be the judge on lavalier versus a boom mic, whether it sounds any better or worse. I suspect that in some situations this is going to help out a lot to cut down on echoes and other things. Again, this is just the Rhodes. Uh, your basic lavalier mic going into the wireless system into the H4N versus a Sennheiser, I believe it's a 600 series shotgun microphone plugged directly into the Zune H4N, which I don't recommend, but for this test it just made ease of use because we don't have a lot of crew members. So we're back outside. Uh, we're going to do a little tiny test here for you where I am going to be wearing the lav mic wirelessly and we're going to have another um, person just act out a silly little five second, 10 second skit. We're just going to be talking dialogue back and forth. The cameraman will be aiming the Sennheiser boom mic at him and I will be wearing the lav and you'll get to see kind of how that works out if you wanted to try a similar mixing situation where you boom one actor and then you lav the other actor. So let's go ahead and I'll show you that skit right now and you can see what you think. So I, uh, I heard down the street, this is where I can come get some free wood. Is that true? Yes. So I can just take as much as I want? Yes, you can. No password, no fee, no nothing? Are you really baiting me right now, sir? No, all right, all right, I'll take it. Can, can you load it all up into my truck? How big is your truck? It's that, that big blue Ford Explorer right there. Oh, that's a nice truck, sir. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a piece of crap, but it'll work. No, 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 it's don't sell yourself short, sir. That is a fantastic automobile. Oh, okay, well, you got a deal. So you got a baby on board or what? Let's go make one. <laughs> So the, the boom mic has better clarity and, and uh, uh, just overall audio quality, which is to be expected. It's a much longer, you know, bigger mic than this little tiny guy, but this, this does a pretty impressive job. If you were gonna shoot with labs, I would say try to keep it consistent. Now you could probably do some post editing to cut off some of the highs on your boom mic to try to blend everything together nicely. 
but the there is a stark difference in the audio quality. As you saw with the skit we recorded, the, the character on the left was mic'd with the boom and I was mic'd with the lav and we wanted to do that test to kind of show you what happens if you use two mics and try to put them together. Now, it's not the best, but with a little bit of post editing you might be able to make it work. That being said, it's not the end of the world either and if, if you find echoey rooms to be more annoying than somebody being a little more trebly than the other uh, subject, that might be a, a valuable trade-off, but you're not going to be able to take a lav mic and a nice shotgun mic and just mix them together and go and have it sound perfect because they're, they're just two different levels of quality. But in the end, this is very useful for being able to cut back outside noise. There's a lot of crows chirping. I don't know. We'll switch to the boom mic because it's recording. You can hear the car. You can hear the crows. You can hear all of that. But when we switch back to the lav mic, you don't hear quite so much of that. It's a much quieter mic and will capture mostly just your subject. So that is a very valuable thing. And like I say, run and gunning filming where you're walking around or if you just want to pull into a restaurant or something and film it. Boy, those guys are really cowing. You can really hear them if we switch back to the boom mic. And we'll capture mostly just your subject. So that is a very valuable thing. And like I say, run and gunning filming where you're walking around or if you just want to pull into a restaurant or something and film it. Boy, those guys are really cowing. You can really hear them if we switch back to the boom the mic. an eagle. And then we switch back to the lab again. It's, it's quite a difference in terms of cutting out some of that excess noise. So there, there are some bonuses. It is quite possible you might film your entire little show or skit using lav mics, but we haven't run into the problems of this kind of thing where, where clothing could rustle. But just for the short-term testing that we did, it was superior in terms of cutting down that exterior noise of echo or ambience or birds or whatever. So if that's important to you, a lav mic might be the way to go. So thanks for tuning in and watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them down at the bottom. We'll try to get back and answer them as quickly as we can. And we'll see you in the next video.